Hey guys, welcome to the Game Feed. Got a couple things to talk about. Nothing really huge in the news, but just some things I want to talk about personally. Uh, number one being the Xbox Live Ultimate Game Sale is going on right now until the 13th. You can check out the list if you just go to Xbox Live. Uh, either if you're on your Xbox 360 or Xbox One, check out all the great deals. Um, and you might be able to find something you like. Um, but aside from that, just not really much news. Talk about a couple things. A, I finally got to play Batman, not the PC version. I'm playing uh, on Xbox One. It's fantastic for the most part, except for the Batmobile. I hate the Batmobile. It has been the bane of my existence on this game. I hate it. I hate it so much. But uh, I think I'm midway, maybe more than midway through the campaign right now. And I'm just finishing up like all the side quests and stuff. But I, I really do enjoy it. Um, it's not better than Arkham City, but it's better than Arkham Origins. I don't know. It might be even better than Arkham Asylum. But it's pretty good. Um, another thing... I've never talked about this before, but I want to talk about my top ten favorite games of all time. And I'll start down the list... Start with number ten. Now, some some of these things you might be saying, "Hey, you're cheating. You can't put multiple games as one title." I well, guess I can because, but when I do it, it's mainly going to be a series of games, and I might say excluding this game. But let's go ahead and get started at number ten. Number ten: Pokemon Gold, Silver, Red, and Blue. Um, now, I played these games when they came out um, on the original Game Boy. Well, you couldn't play Gold and Silver on the original. I think you had to play it on a Game Boy Color. But um, once I got, like, I was in middle school when these came out. And uh, me and my friends used to get, like, the Link Gables. We used to battle and trade Pokemon. But um, I, I played the shit out of Red and Blue. Got to the point where I could get Masingo and duplicate the items and... It was pretty fun, but it wasn't until Gold and Silver came out, but it was, it was fantastic. I played the um, remakes for the DS, and I really liked them, too. But, um, yeah, if you guys ever get a chance to play, like, if you want to play old-school Pokemon, just play start from Red and Blue. And if they decide to remake them, I would love to see, like, them put them on Virtual Console or just do a complete, like, remake of them and put them on the Wii U. I would, that's my fucking fantasy. It's like a full-fledged uh, Pokemon game for the Wii U. And I got a visitor. I got I got Ender with me today. He's uh he's wanting to join me on this adventure. So internet videos plus kittens, right? My number nine game goes to Battlefield Bad Company Two. And I know, I know, I know. Some of these games on this list, they're kind of newer. But Battlefield Bad Company 2, I play so much of this multiplayer component, it's ridiculous. I, I probably put like 200, 300 hours easily on, X, on Xbox Live just on that game. All the maps, I mastered all the weapons, everything is completely maxed out on all the classes. And it's just fun, the destructibility, the humor of the series. Now, number two wasn't as funny as the first one. The first one had more humor in it, but it's just still fun. Um... The destruction and everything like that, that was cool. But Bad Company 2 was, in, in my opinion, is probably best of the Battlefield series because I didn't really start playing Battlefield until Bad Company 1, but I didn't really play its multiplayer. It wasn't until Bad Company 2 came out that I had Xbox Live, so I started playing Bad Company 2's multiplayer, and that's all I played. That's like when Black Ops came out, so I was playing both of them. But Bad Company 2, I still catch myself going back and forth through it. Which that leads me to number eight, uh, Resident Evil 3. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Why do you pick Resident Evil 3 out of all the Resident Evils that's come out? Well, re remake, the RE remake is a master, it's a master class of awesomeness. Uh, Resident Evil 1 and 2, especially 2, considering it might be one of the best games ever made, and especially number 4. Well, number 3 was genuinely, like, genuinely scary to me. In fact, you you know you'd be walking around a corner and you hear stars and freaking nemesis just be popping out at you. It's just and you always had to make you split decisions. It wasn't the longest. It wasn't the best in the story. It was just fun. And nemesis was actually really scary compared to Mr. X or you know tyrant. It, it was just really scary to me. But yeah, I love number three. Um, it, I would like to see a remake of that, but I don't see that happening. But 
Yeah, you never know. I would like to see a remake of, you know, two and three. That would be cool, but, you know. Uh, my number seven goes to Skyrim. Um, had to put that on there. Uh, when Skyrim came out, the first night I waited in line. This is whenever I was waiting in line for games to launch. I pre-ordered games all the time. And Skyrim came out. Now, I played a lot of Oblivion. I actually lost a girlfriend to Oblivion. Um, believe it or not, it did happen. But um, it wasn't Skyrim. I got hooked instantly. So picked up the game, uh, got home. I started playing at midnight. Now, I had a weekend. I actually had a vacation planned that whole week. And I played that game for 36 hours straight. And my friend, uh, Jay, at the time when we lived in this little, little house, he came and was like, dude, are you still playing that game? I was like, yeah. And no sleep. Um, I went, I left to go get, you know, Wendy's. We had a Wendy's, and they had these little 99-cent cheeseburgers. It was like... The super cheddar burgers. So we would go over there. I take like an hour break, come back, play more Skyrim. I'd save, and that's about it. But yeah, Skyrim's a blast. I I I couldn't even tell you. I think there's last time I checked, there's 500 hours on the save. But I had and this is on the Xbox 360. See, I didn't really start playing PC games until you know two or three years ago. So I wasn't really big into PC games because I couldn't afford a rig. But yeah. Uh, which I goes next to me to the next thing, Gears of War as a series. Um, I'm a big Gears fan. If that's any indication, uh, I love Gears of War. It's just fun. It's a blast. Um, now, story wise, it's not the best story, but it gets it gets its points across. It's just fun to play. It's like a big bromance uh, war story. Um, the multiplayer is really good, but it was whenever I saw that game for the 360, I, I remember seeing the trailer. It came out in theaters. Uh, it had the Mad World song. I was like, oh, wow. And you know, I kept track of that game because it was announced, I think, before the 360 came out. And I kept track of that game. Like, any news, I had to get the details on it. And, um, you know, this happened with all of them. With the exception of Judgment. Judgment's... It's okay. It's fun. It's more arcadey than the other games. But, you know, it's just... The whole series as a whole is good. It's beautiful. It has a set theme. And I can't wait for Gears 4 to come out. Because, you know, I did watch the trailer for it. It was a little bit dark as a gameplay for uh, at E3. It was a little dark. But, you know, it still had, it has some of the same team that worked on it before. Especially Rod Ferguson. He's going to be working on it. So, can't wait for that. Now... Let's take it back, way, way back. We're going to go with Link to the Past, Zelda, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo, which you can get it now on, I think you can get it on virtual console as well. If you have a Wii, Wii U, whatever. And it's sequel Link Between Worlds. So I'm going to combine those two because they're two of the same. Um, it's um, I, I played the shit out of that game when I was a kid. Um, especially, I never beat the game. Never. Never fucking beat the game because whenever I played the game, like every time I play it, I'd have to blow in it. And what would happen is the saves would corrupt every time. So I'd go back and I'd play through the light world and get the master sword, fight Ganon, go to the dark world. I guess I, if I'm wrong on my Zelda terminology, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's this is it's game. It still it still lives. It still works today. Especially, it's proven with Link, Link um, Between Worlds. It's fun. It's a blast. The mechanics work. The graphics are still nice. Um, you know, it's a fun game. I beat... <laughs> it's funny, because I beat Link Between Worlds before I beat Link to the Past. And But I recently got it on Virtual Console, and I've been playing it somewhere. So now I have a viable way of saving the game. I've always made it to Ganon at the end. Always made it to Ganon. It's a funny thing. The game never wanted me to beat it. So, and make it to Ganon at the very end of the fucking game. And once you're in the dark world, and I go to fight him, you know, turn it off after I saved it. All the saves are gone. Corrupt. That's bad. But yeah, I'm going to beat it eventually. And I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to be like, yes, it's the best day in the world! But anyways, 
Uh, my number four is Fallout 3. I would put New Vegas on, but I put more hours into Fallout 3 than any of the Fallout games, and I play through all the expansions pretty much any time Bethesda comes out with something, except for ESO right now. I'm taking a break from ESO because this I'm just playing catch-up right now on my backlog. I'm finally feeling comfortable enough to where I can do that. But yeah, Fallout 3 was a blast for me. That's the first time I ever played a Fallout game. I know the original was, was these isometric um, RPGs, so I never got into that. Didn't really have PC, but I have them. I have the games now. I uh, had put them on a Steam sale like two, three years ago. Maybe that's something I should go back and check on one of these days. But yeah, Fallout 3, everything. The VAT system, um, I can just be, if I want to, I can just go in and just murder everybody, pickpocket, be a dumbass by <laughs> having like zero speech. So whenever I talk to somebody, they give me like some big spill about what I think of things. I'd be like, I am Love's Collars, purple or something like that. You could be an absolute anything you want in the Fallout games. But uh, yeah, Fallout 3 is definitely great. Now we're going to go to number three. And this is going to be a series of games. Except for the card games. Uh, Metal Gear Solid as a series. The story is fucking crazy. Um, and you have to play you have to play them all. If you don't if you, if you go in playing Metal Gear Solid 2 or 4, a good example, play number 4. You're not going to know what the hell's going on. It's just not happening. Because all the games, they all flow into each other. The story, the narrative, as crazy as it is, it flows right into each other. And it's it's good stuff. It's good. It's weird. And Hideo Kojima is totally going to be missed after Phantom Pain comes out. And I don't know what's going to happen to the series as a whole after that. But, you know, I, I remember playing number four after I had been waiting for it. That's the reason I bought a PlayStation 3. I was not going to buy a PlayStation 3. I hated it. I don't know why, but PlayStation 3 is awesome. I love it now. But I bought PlayStation 3 just to play Metal Gear Solid 4. That was the system seller for me. And <laughs> sitting down watching almost hour and a half uh, long cut scenes and getting to the point of the end of the game where you're like, Oh, God, snake, I feel bad. Don't don't die. And it makes you cry a little bit. Yeah, it made me cry. But, uh, yeah, Metal Gear Solid is a series. Now... Here's the thing. If you're going to play uh, Phantom Pain, you played all the other ones, I wouldn't advise pay, playing Peace Walker. So I got some friends that's like, they totally skip P Peace Walker. You can't really play Ground Zeroes and uh, Phantom Pain and know what the fuck is going on without it. Because you have to play Peace Walker. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And Peace Walkers, you can easily put 100 hours into it. So, if you're stepping into Metal Gear Solid, buy the collection, as an HD collection out, um, or the Legacy collection on PlayStation 3 has Metal Gear Solid 1 through whatever, just play through all of them, it's fun, it's worth it, and the graphics, they hold up real well, the gameplay holds up pretty well, um, shit, you can even play Metal Gear Solid Revengeance, Rising Revengeance, Revengeance, since... You get this really awesome sword, you're like, oh god, I'm red. <laughs> Slice things up. It was pretty good. It's not really canon, but it was still good. Alright, so let's hop out on Metal Gear Solid and let's go to my number two spot, which. It's a series, so. I'm sorry. Halo. Halo as a series. And you're probably wondering, why did you not put Mass Effect there instead of Halo? I love Mass Effect. Mass Effect's really good, but it's not. That's more of a. That's not my favorite game series of time. All time is probably one of those special, maybe, side side game series. But Halo is a series. Um, I started play. I'd never seen. Uh, I this is the reason why I bought an Xbox was for Halo. I went to a friend's house. Was waiting, getting ready to go to prom, and he had an Xbox. The only person I knew that had one. He had the big Duke controller and everything. He had a game called Halo. He was like, you want to play Halo? I was like, yeah, I'll play Halo. So I started playing Halo. It was fun. It's a blast. Like, the controls worked. Even though the, you know, the controller is like, like huge, giant-ass, like, plate-sized controller, it still worked. It was fluid. Um, the narrative's good. The story's good. And, you know, 
Some, except for exception for number two. Number two was kind of uh, on story, but the multiplayer is a blast. And I just like I like Master Chief. I like the lore. I've read some of the books, um, the comic books, the watch the TV shows. I got a tattoo of Halo, I had a tattoo of every game thing, which reminds me too, tattoos, uh, Mass Effect. So, you know why not? But yeah. Um, Number four had a really good story, too. I was afraid whenever Bungie left it that it was going to be out of hands. I never... I wasn't the biggest multiplayer guy. I played a shit out of um, number three's multiplayer. And we used to take uh, our Xboxes and TVs to my friend's house. And we just, uh, you know, do a bunch of LAN parties and just play Halo and Call of Duty 2 pretty much all day long. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely a blast. Um, and I can't wait for Halo 5, despite... Um, the Master Chief Collection. But that leads me to the number one, and that would be Final Fantasy VII. And that came out in 1996 or 97. And when, <laughs> and whenever it came out, I had it before the... I had a memory card, so I would play this game with no memory card, get out of Midgar, go to Nibelheim, then go into the marshes and get killed by Beta. Every time. And I couldn't save it, so... Once you died, you died. You couldn't, you know. I did this several times. But as the first game I ever played that made me cry, I cried like a baby whenever it came out. And I'll probably, I've, I've bought it. I can't wait for the remake. And, yeah, I was just pretty excited for it. But it's it's probably one of those entries that people will be like, oh, why are you, why would you get that game? Why do you like it so much? And I don't know. It's really good. But... That ends my list for this episode of the Game Feed. I'll be back on Thursday with even more. Uh, my fiance is taking my kid away. It's bad. It's okay. But guys, thanks so much. This will be up on YouTube later. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. And be sure to share everything. Guys, take it easy and see you Thursday.